In the last example, we looked at using a symmetry mate and a width mate to center a block inside of a slot. But that block wasn't moving side to side after we centered it in the slot. It stayed centered in that slot and didn't move. In this example, I want to demonstrate that you can also use the symmetrical mate and the width mate to maintain two components that are symmetrical to each other through a range of motion. So to demonstrate that, we're going to use an assembly of a turnbuckle. And because there's a few things that I do want to point out, we actually have two turnbuckle assemblies. So if you're going to follow along, you need to save a copy of assembly 4.2.3A and assembly 4.2.3B. With the two copies saved, we're going to start with working on assembly 4.2.3A. And in this assembly, the fixed component or the first component in our assembly is the center portion of the turnbuckle. When I was drawing the center portion of the turnbuckle, I kept the top plane centered in the part. So we're going to be able to use a symmetrical mate. So let's go ahead and activate the mate tool. We want an advanced mate and we want a symmetric mate. The top plane is going to be our symmetry plane. So I'll select the symmetry plane box and select the top plane, that center portion of the eyelet, and then my mate selections for the entities that are going to be symmetrical around that plane. I'm going to select the end face of one eyelet and the end face of the other eyelet. And I can select OK. Now, as I move one eyelet out, the other eyelet moves out symmetrically to the first eyelet. Of course, in this example, we did have that plane centered on the center component. But if we didn't, we could have used the width mate. So let's quickly go ahead and select the symmetrical mate. And we're going to delete it by hitting the delete key. And again, select advanced mates. This time, we're going to create the same effect using a width mate. So I've selected width mate, and for the width selections, we can select any two symmetrical faces on the center portion. So I'll select the outside face on the top, and then the outside face on the bottom. For the tab selection, we'll select the same faces on the eyelets, so the end face on one eyelet, and the end face on the other eyelet, and select OK. And again, as I move the eyelet, it stays symmetrical with the other eyelet. So both the symmetrical mate and the width mate can be used with parts that are traveling through a range of motion. To conclude this example, we're going to switch over to assembly B. And in this assembly, one of the eyelets is my fixed component. And instead, the moving components are the center portion and the other eyelet. So again, let's activate the mate tool, use an advanced mate, and we could use either a symmetry mate or a width mate. It doesn't matter. At this point, I think you know that both will work. So let's use the easier one and select the symmetric mate. Our two symmetrical faces are going to be the end faces of the eyelets. Our symmetry plane is again going to be the top plane of that center part. So I'll select the top plane and select OK. And now as I move the one eyelet, or if I move the center piece, the two eyelets stay symmetrical with each other, even though one of the eyelets is fixed. Of course, as I just mentioned, you can use that same technique with the width mate if you don't have a plane that's centered inside of that middle component.